because they are willing to switch things up. They can adjust. Yes. And they're not afraid to tie uh, to try, excuse me, crazy things like a full lockdown composition. Whereas, you know, Time Flow, no disrespect to Timeless and his boys, but they seemed very one-dimensional up to this point. Yeah, Greymane mm. plus Garrosh, and that's and basically Zarya. it for yeah. them. And Zarya sometimes, time, from time to time. If you're gonna do a one-trick draft, it better be the best draft. CE have shown us that, but it doesn't always work for Time Flow. Yeah, and Timeless in particular, he is known to be such an exotic bird in the Hero League, uh, or he used to be one of those, and this willingness uh, to give new things a try and to give them a shot in HCC China has so far been lacking. Uh, and I really hope that in the game to come here, in the series to come with Time Flow involved, we're going to see much more of this new rookie not afraid to try new things, pretty much like Sunny Lion here. Uh, speaking of trying new things, both teams feel they're going to try banning Genji and Hanzo for a change, making uh, going out a limb a little bit here, a little bit risky. Definitely true. We see exactly the style, the drafting <laughs> style from game number one. Just switch things around right now because the ones secured themselves the Greymane this time. Indeed. The Greymane coming out first here. And they are big fans of it, so very good to see. ETC taken by Sunny Lion again. Worked well for them last time. There we go. That much is true. Now, the map is a different one. It is Tomb of the Spider Queen. However, it is similar to Dragonshire in many ways. Namely, it's pretty small, just like Dragonshire. Rotations are really important, just like Dragonshire. So it wouldn't surprise me if Sunny Lion, they were going for a similar style in their draft. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree with it. It works well enough. There's no... Like, honestly, I'd say the same hero is different style. Just pick... Yeah. Uh, sanctification, pick the serial again, pick sanctification, pick false down again, it worked well, pick gust for a little bit of disengage, you see mosh pit, you could basically go the exact same picks and still play a completely different game. Very true, and that's the beauty of heroes like Tyrael. I mean, he was so popular all across the globe in the competitive scene, even before the rework, and I think after what we've saw, what we've seen here in HCC China, it's gonna blow his popularity through the roof. Yeah, I agree. His popularity was already high. Like, Tyrion was one of those heroes, we've said it multiple times, who he'd show up maybe once, maybe twice in each individual HGC, and then the offline event would happen, and no changes would be made to Tyrion, but he'd be the number one pick because of how high his skill cap is. Now that he gets Holy Ground earlier and has a very interactive talent pool in general with some really cool and team-empowering abilities, we're going to see a lot more of him in the league. And I like what the one has brought to the table here up to this mm -hmm. point. They're going for two orcs in a row while my alliance heart is pounding in fury. I still think it's a great choice on Tomb of the Spreader Queen. Not only because Gul'dan obviously offers a lot of wave clear, but the horrifies. It really seems to be uh, one of the major, major uh, components to really stop the aggression from Sunny Lion. Yeah. And actually, all the heroes so far, it's apparently an only gruff-voiced hero's draft uh, in this particular case. <laughs> a little Double vicious, orc. don't you think? That was good. I like that. Can you do a TC? No. I. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's only so much uh, I'm willing to make a fool of myself on, on stream. The ETC I could never do. you saying voice acting's making a fool of yourself? Yeah, maybe. You, you start. You starting, maybe. mate? <laughs> <laughs> As we're going to see Jada bad down. Fair enough. It was pretty strong. Yeah, it definitely was strong. And especially with that ETC, AoE, uh, crowd control, mosh pit potential, and Jaina is definitely something you want to get out uh, of the equation. Now, there's one thing I want to see the one avoid doing, and that is picking Johanna as the main tank. Now, while Muradin is banned, obviously, there's still a couple of other solid options. Most importantly, Tetra, I would love, I would love to see a Diablo at some point. Diablo could be good. He's uh, another hero who's jumped very high up in terms of priority mm -hmm. in all the regions, except China. Uh, even in Hero League, Diablo has leapt up in popularity. Yeah, especially here in Tomb, where you can get so much value yeah. from your Devil's Dew talent. Walls one. for days. Yeah, globes for oh. days indeed. Yeah, globes, walls, everything Diablo loves is here on this map. Uh, lots of lanes to soak his souls. He, he has a good time. Uh, also, this is the true. this is the this is the map where Diablo actually really gained popularity the first time, with uh, Virtus Pro back from Europe uh, European Road to BlizzCon, 
where they ran Diablo Lightning Breath and Tassadar Force Wall. And the entire strategy was just tackle them into <laughs> the Force Wall and then Lightning Breath them point blank. It was brilliant. It was so daft. Good times. Good times indeed. But are we going to see the Lord of Terror on the side of the one? That remains to be seen. But we have oh. Ragnaros firing it up here on Tomb. And Tetra, tell us why he's so popular on a map like Tomb of Spider Queen. Uh, Ragnaros is great on a map like Tomb of the Spider Queen for starters because there's a solo lane he's going to have a good time in and for second because his Molten Core can basically reach two lanes. So if he was to Molten Core in mid lane he can defend both top and bot at the same time if he shares his abilities well enough. If he uh, Molten Core's top he can also siege mid a bit. It works very well. Yeah very well and especially in the top lane you could also never forget the potential in impact of a molten core near the boss fights oftentimes we see teams abandoning a boss call simply because there is a molten core to go down and ruin their days so Ragnar was one of the more versatile heroes especially when it comes to defending on maps like Braxis Holdout against the Zerg Wave for example or on Tomb of the Spider Queen the very battleground we're playing here right now so yeah a lot of uh a lot of damage potentially coming in, and I love the preemptive Tychus pick as well, because now Diablo all of a sudden doesn't really seem that good of a choice anymore. But the yeah. golden Leoric is here, and a rather <laughs> low HP warrior with a new break. I like that. I like that. So do I. It, it uh, tries to force away from the bigger they are, at least for starters, because mm -hmm. you're going to get very little value from it. So Tychus has to switch up his build at least a little bit, which is fine. He has lots of options on that level, but it's kind of interesting. It, uh the drain life, for example, on ETC is going to be good. It's a lot of CC for Mosh Pit potential. Pretty solid last two picks here. Very true. Now, what is still missing for Sunny Line? It is definitely another frontliner, potentially, or another ranged, if they are confident enough to run ETC Ragnaros as the solo tank, solo melee. Uh, but Uther already provides a little bit of body impact as well, so it wouldn't surprise me if you saw another ranged, maybe, for additional wave clear. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Ragnaros is probably their solo laner, so who would go well in the four-man rotation with Uther, Tychus, and Stitches? I would I mean, definitely say another damage dealer. I'm always down for a little bit of bra and a little bit of ai, so... Uh, this is the map to do it if we do see the bra. And... <laughs> no, they're not leaving. They're uh, not messing with much it. Much less bra. Uh, uh, lots more magic, though, in terms of yep. the pew pews. So we do see Lee Ming coming in here against the new Brack. Of course, Disintegrate versus Cocoon. Winner is usually Disintegrate. Yeah, definitely true. I think it's a really solid counter by... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. By Sunny Lion. The infamous Disintegrate counter to the Cocoon just comes out so strong. And I'm not saying that Nazebo couldn't have done it, because Poison is usually very good against it as well. You drop the spiders on top, and boom, there goes the Cocoon. But Li Ming just offers so much more, more mobility, stronger early game, stronger team fighting impact potentially. So I can't blame them for ignoring my favorite Voodoo Doctor. Yeah, you are a really big fan of the Zebo. Dude, he's my highest played hero. He's my I'm highest played hero. Surprised. Level 84 representing. Yeah, and you can see that all on Kendrick's stream. Uh, <laughs> such a plug. We, we can get one, it's fine. Uh, as we do, see, uh, we do see, though, the Li Ming. Now, we talked about the Disintegrate versus the Cocoon, but it's not a situation of Li Ming just counters Anubarak. Li yeah. Ming has issues. Anubarak already comes with passive spell armor, and he does have the option to take the Nerubian armor, or if he wanted to try and block abilities without taking them himself, the much lesser picked Beetle spell armor, which is an option he can have. Very true. Can Sunny Lion tie, uh, excuse me, extend their lead even further? And can the one <laughs> tie things out here in that best of two? We're going to find out. First of all, we're going to introduce the team named the one to you guys. With Hugo on that Leoric, Lucky plays Gul'dan, and Ming on the Greymane this time around. Zado, of course, on the support on Rhaegar, and he, he plays the Anubarak. Whereas on the right-hand side in the Red Trunks, it is going to be Sunny Lion. Playing for them, Power on Uther, Jada on Lee Ming, Phoebe D playing on the Tychus, C is on ETC, and Eustia is on the Ragnaros. And Anubarak goes for the Globe talent. Who can blame him on a map like this? Exactly. Globes are your best friends in uh, Towers of Doom. For sure, we see the Power Hungry, we see the Brock Rock for ETC as well, and the Regeneration Master on the flip side for Anubarak. Pretty interesting to see because you would normally expect him to still go for the Anub uh, Nerubian skin. Uh, yeah. It looks like he trusts in his innate tank ability. 
He moves in with the in comes C with the CC, but Meng is able to back up here without getting killed. He is going to pop the fountain, not going to be back this early in the game. All right, Leoric didn't really participate in that early skirmish in the middle lane. He decided that it was better for him to soak the lane already. Unfortunately for him, Sunny Lion was still fast enough to make the rotation uh, happen themselves, and they're not missing out on any minion yeah. XP. So it's going to be a bot mid rotation for Sunny Lion and a top mid rotation for the one. So Ragnaros is going to hold out mm -hmm. the top lane. Actually, it looks like it's going to be a three-man rotation. And Gul'dan, is he in the rotation? I, yeah, he is in the rotation. He was yeah. just a little bit slow to leave there. Yeah, Gul'dan was trying to pressure the Ragnaros a little bit more so he could... Um basically prevent the rotations from happening and they would maybe miss out on XP, but so far both teams are really, really doing a solid job. But we can already see a different approach here. Yeah, too late. C couldn't make it in time, but whereas the one is focusing on the mercenary camp very early on, Sunny Lion just plays a more standard game and tries to go for team fights instead. Locking down the Grey Maid, another stun coming in, but he is not one to fall up to this Ooh. point. Meeple nearly finished him off there. Yeah. Feed B eats the corruption. Uther cools up. Oh! Gets it at the last second. Wow. Did you just call Ragnos' W a meatball? I love it. <laughs> I can't remember where I heard that. It might have been Trick. <laughs> but we do CC moving it down to continue the rotations as Hugo is beginning a mercenary and will get some help from Meng for it. Oh, you don't even need to put some chili sauce on that because it's already hot enough, man. That much I can tell you. <laughs> Indeed it is. A C moves in, continues the rotation. A he he continuing to live up to his cheeky name with interrupts, but takes so much damage there. Ooh. They took a measure. Now keep in mind, the Nerubian armor is not here to save him, so every ounce of damage he takes, he's only going to have his innate 15 spell armor to block things from. So uh, Liaming and Tychus grenades could really start hurting him a lot more. And keep in mind, despite the fact that there's a lot of globes to be obtained from uh, here on Tomb of the Spider Queen, it still takes considerably long to accumulate 30, which is exactly what you need for the Regeneration Master. As used here, decides to actually leave top lane for a bit. Lee Ming, by the way, risky choice here, going for that, uh, going for that cooldown reduction on the arcade orb as opposed to the dominance. Yep, there we go. So a little bit of uh, additional AOE poking. Two men power slide going in. Zado getting locked down, but. The one is just so slippery. They're so elusive. They're not getting caught by any of those CC chains up to this point. Yeah, they're managing to avoid any kind of really bad engage potential for triple the moment. Triple stun. Uh, sh sh triple stun. And he, he does have the chase options here, thanks to his level 4 shed exoskeleton. Mm hmm. Very true. That gives him a little bit of movement speed, doesn't it? Yes, it does. He becomes a speedy beetle. In the meantime, we see both teams shuffling around. In terms of turn-ins, the one is actually doing a little bit of a better job, or have been doing a little bit of a better job. 29 gems to 11, and they're doing a pretty good job at maintaining control over those turn-in points as well. And that is oftentimes one of the crucial uh, requirements you have to meet in order to succeed on Tomb of the Spider Queen. He, he stuns up C, Ooh, which gives denied. Hugo enough time. It gives Hugo enough time to turn in, though. Yeah. Meng having more difficulties. But he, he, Shed Exoskeleton, see you later. Able to turn it round. Beautiful move there. But managing to both delay and also turn around and pick up a kill. And maybe another one here. But no, no way, C no way, no way. will oh. Oh, C just escape. And he picked up the gems at the same time. Yeah, I was already starting to question the reckless move by ETC there. Literally going into the four man gank by the one. But. It all turned out well for them. Five gems is definitely what they need here still, but already Sunny Lions, they're posturing up a good stun by Anubarak, and here come the Web Weavers. Here come the Web Weavers for the one here. They hit level seven as well, only a little bit before Sunny Lion, but they now have the option to try and put on some pressure and try and get themselves an extended lead. Yeah, very, very true. ETC posturing up here, but he gets immediately scouted by Hehe on that Anubrek, and now it is the one's moment to shine. It's a relatively early turn-in. Normally, we're used to seeing the turn at around level 8, 9, or even 10. So let's see how much of an early game advantage that one can sneak up with. They're going to get, at minimum, this one t uh, both these towers here. So you're going to try and prevent them from pushing in uh, too much further, but he's going to have issues. It's Webweaver. Yep. Still at half health. Still no Molten Core to be used. Ragnar was doing a good enough job in the middle lane to clear it all by himself without the help of his raid boss form. He doesn't even use it uh, to save the top lane maybe, which is currently also defended by Li Ming. So all things considered, 
I think Sunny Line did an okay job, but still a lot was lost, and that is being reflected yeah. in the overall XP right now. The one is on a rampage right now. A surprisingly effective clear by Leeming, honestly. I thought mm -hmm. she would have a much harder time up Me there too. on her own. Me too. So good job. And also, good job, Ragnaros. One of the biggest issues we have seen from Ragnaros is in the past is they take this level one hammer talent and then just fail to stack it because they are either too greedy stacking it and die or they're too safe and just, well, don't get the stacks. <laughs> in this case, he's already done. Six minute stack. Very good job. Better than we usually see. Yeah, very nice. Let's see what the level 10 choice is going to be for Sunny Lion, by the way. Uh, there's still a strong cult that follows the way of the lava wave. And uh, eventually we're gonna we're gonna get rid of this problem. But for now it still remains. And even China could go and fall for it. <laughs> I mean it would, it would, once again, we mentioned Trick no, earlier, it would make him no. happy. <laughs> no. As we do see the heroics for the one, at least by the way, Ancestral Healing, go for the Throat, the Cocoon, Horrify, and March of the Black King. Very true, and more gems are being turned in. The Cocoon goes down on ETC. He, he is here to follow up with the stuns. Can they kill the cow? Monka as we're going to find out. Stun has landed. They managed to get the abilities, but <laughs> ETC don't care. There's the Horrify. They'll get Tychus, so that actually is better. So they are able to <laughs> kill off the Tychus instead. Strong survival by ETC. The cow proves to be much tankier than anticipated, but as you said, Tychus fell and died for ETC's sins. Very unfortunate here. And as you said, Tychus is actually more important when it comes to defending those minion waves that are crushing in into the waves and into the buildings of Sunny Lion. Yeah. Mid four goes down. Eustia will survive this one without taking too much damage. Tychus has respawned, so he will be back in the game. Unfortunately, all this time he was dead. Mm -hmm. He could have been getting in the rhythm stacks, which, by the way, is what he ended up picking at level four. We did predict he would not go for the bigger they are because of the low hit point tanks on the side of the one. Exactly. Um, you know, the questing talent on minigun is usually very nice when it comes to playing against double warriors because you have two warriors to stack it on yeah. two people who are constantly going to be close to your face and uh, you know stacking up the duration can definitely hurt an anubrak more than as you exactly. said uh the bigger they are and i'm a sucker for infinitely questing talent <laughs> as we see zado fleeing out there i'm still waiting for someone to really use cigars in a pro game uh as we see c pulling back here he has mosh pit available and it is going to be that sulfurous smash immediate molten core is dropped there the molten swing will be available if the one push in any further and this will be a great dissuadance here from that happening very true it is a long cooldown though so if this web beaver face or this web beaver wave survives they won't have it to defend the keep right now once again tyke is just being cocooned for good measure no damage really done in the meantime though look at the bottom lane hugo Turning on the heat on that Lyric in the middle. Also, a lot of pressure to be applied here. And it looks like Sunny Line is getting overwhelmed slowly but surely. Very slowly but surely. They were able to clear the cocoon quite quickly thanks to Ragnaros's uh, Meteor also being very effective. Oh, horrify. Utha doesn't want to be here, but the but ETC coming in from the back being a great distraction, forcing everyone to get Mosh out of pit. position. And Nubarak will get dropped here, and Ragnaros should eventually be able to kill off Lucky as the sea continues to chase. Beautiful stun, and the Another one, one. Get absolutely punished. Yeah, absolutely true. The resets are real for Li Ming. All the keeps are still left alive. The Disintegrate finishing off Leoric as well. And he dropped a couple of gems here, which is going to be really useful. And now, speaking of gems, Tetra, Sunny Lion, they have a chance to go for boss and a turn in alike. They get the turn in, ETC doing it, and they start the boss. If they can do this right, it will tie together. You can see Ragnaros over by the rest of it, uh, further back in the lane, pushing it up so the web weaver will spawn next to the boss. That is the plan here, and we see the replay. A nice kill onto a Nubarak, and Lucky is so zoned out, unable to help his team with any kind of damage. Yeah, really well done, and that could have been the difference between Regeneration Master and Nerubian Armor. Anubrak was falling very, very rapidly. Maybe the additional magic armor could have saved him here. Now, failed gank attempt by the one. They missed the chance to slow down the advance of Sunny Lion. They are still knocking on the front door here with the boss and the wet root combined. The bottom lane, that's the only good news for the one. It's still far away because the mercenary is buying additional time. Rag was not able to push the lane up, by the way, though, so that Web Weaver in the top lane did lose a significant amount of health before he was in pushing range. Here's the stun onto the Aura. Gonna try and blow him See up. See you later. And they do. That minigun and Lee Ming burst. Easily able to take down that tanky solo lane in the form of the Auric. 
And you know, in quotation marks, I want to add, it's just a Leoric, you know, but it's still very harming, very crippling right now because the keep could actually end up falling now. We have a Tychus Odin to come down. The keep wall is about to fall as well. The Revver is a little bit low, but it could be enough after all to deal some heavy, heavy damage. Hugo is back though. Hugo is back, returning to his team for a defensible attempt. Somehow, despite the lay being basically unattended, Bot Fort did actually survive there. Here's the cocoon. On to Uther. Immediate oh, the fear. Beautiful. Horrify prevents the Molten Core. And Pow will be the Mosh one to drop Three-man Mosh Pit in the back, though. Can they get the value? Beautiful. So Fury Smash the Ancestral lands on Lucky. Can we get the Molten Core this time? Here it comes. A Wait. massive stun. The resets are about to start, Tetcher. Beautiful move, Lee Ming resets, but no dominance, she has no health, not able to hold the line, C has no mana, and Rag is left alone, and he will get dropped down. It's a 5 for 1 in favor of the 1. A 5-man team wipe, and that means no more gems for Sunny Line to be turned in anytime soon. Look at that team fight once more. Uther goes down so early, but the mosh pit was good, but Uther, he didn't really have anything to protect the teammates anymore, and there were still warriors from the one barraging the way through. No follow-up here, unfortunately, for the mosh pit. And here comes a big multi core, but too little too late, as Tetris said. No yeah. dominance to keep Lee Ming alive there anymore. And the Horrify preventing the multi oh, going down so at the good. start of the fight. If it had gone down at the start of the fight, that would have absolutely been Sunny Lion's win there. But, like, you, uh, like we said, it was just too good. And as such, the one, they begin their comeback. There's still 10 gems off of a turn in, but Sunny Lion are even further. Yeah, and it's, it's actually mind-blowing to see how ineffective that turn in plus boss really turned out to be for yeah. Sunny Lane. They didn't even get the top fort. The bottom fort is still unharmed as well. And the mid keep is still standing. Normally, you expect so much momentum, so much value to be dropped from a mighty turn in like that. Yeah, with the boss as well. I How did the top keep, the top fort survive? I have no idea. Look at it, it's healthy. It doesn't even need a mule. That is crazy. But Sunny Lion, they tried to push mid. And they were able to get at least the fort. But in the meantime, their keeps are being pressured. As slowly, the one collects enough gems to try another turn in. Here we go. You can see how the wizard mercenary is getting focused by Feeb D on the Tychus. Now the magic aura is no longer there. However, how many gems are left for the one? It looks like they have enough for a turn in. It's going to be close, but it's going to be enough after all. 12 left on Leoric. Here we go. They also timed the Siege Shine Camp perfectly. Hey, he doesn't get hit by the Power Slide. He instead turns it around with a Cocoon. That could be a little bit of a waste here after all. Yeah, his team was nowhere near in position, but now they are coming in. Ominous Wraith trying to get oh some my value. Goodness, on to Tychus. There's the Horrify. It doesn't hit anyone. The Divine Shield, though, keeping Tychus alive. A C is pulling back. Moshpit is available. If they go too deep here, Lee Ming's in a good position to turn around the damage here as Feed B rains down the fire. And that was so important for Feeb D to stay alive. If Tychus had fallen here, that would have been certainly GG because there was no way for them to hold four versus five against the White Beavers, cool. against the full team. Here goes the Multicore. It needs to be pulled. There we see an immediate clear of that bottom lane. This gives Sunny Lion the freedom. And the fact is, Rag can stay in this multi core and begin sieging onto there mid. That's exactly what you see here. Getting that value on such a small map is so good. It really is good. The wave viewers are still spilling the purple goo onto the keeps of Sunny Lion. C is going in with an aggressive power slide, but no value Very to good. be gained up to this point. Webweaver is dead though, the keep survives. Now it's just top lane with the Webweaver already low for having been alive for so long because they do have ticking life here. So they're only going to send Rag up to deal with it as the rest of the team tries to protect this keep. Wave clear is desperately needed here to keep the minions at bay. But he here on that Anubrek, he can spawn the beetles who basically act like pseudo minions to take the aggro away from the keep. But in the end, the ones say, okay, we have achieved enough. We have baited out a couple of cooldowns. Most importantly, the molten core. We can come back later and put an end to that middle keep. So I like the patience. I like the collective uh, decision making there as well. And in the case of an emergency, the one, they could just stall it out until level 20 because they do have more than an entire level lead. They do indeed. And C in danger. Cleanse is good. Pow, put himself out of position to do so, though. This could be a disaster. The Ominous Rape is go. beginning to expire, but Uther is so far away from being safe. He will go down here. 
unless he gets ignored. The hammer <laughs> does not land. Power is just walking through the enemy team. He doesn't care. He's trying to make it back home, and he's actually going to do it. Never mind. How did he go? Whoa! Okay, they got him. But the mosh pit just on Greymate trying to finish him off with the Calamity. Not enough to get the kill. And this is going to be potentially a full team wipe if they can catch up to Eustia. And he's trying to speed boost away. But that's still four, five members <laughs> dead. And the one move on to the core. Tetra, I made a crucial mistake in my analysis. <laughs> oh, sorry. No worries. When I expected the one to stall things out because the word stall doesn't exist in HTC China Dictionary. The one, they finish it off with a clean team wipe. The sunny lines are bested and tamed and the series ends in a one-to-one. -one. Yeah, a couple mistakes at the end there by Sunny.